Welcome back to Input Fishing, everybody. Today, we're gonna start this video in the shop. Yeah, you're right. Come on, come on, look at this. Look at this weird thing that my dad got for almost nothing at a garage sale. When I first looked at it, I was like, what is that? See what it says? Pro Kick Wilson. Now, this is something for balls. You put a ball on this somehow, but we're not gonna put our balls on this at all. Let's get this, look at this. How does this work? So what we're going to do with this is turn it into a rod holder for those places where you can't get anything in the ground. We're going to come over here to the drill press because we need to remove this rivet to get this top piece off. I'm going to let dad do that. There you go. So my dad is always collecting weird stuff from garage sales, weird junk, brings it home, and then he puts it on my tackle table here, and I'm like, what is this? So he's trying to encourage me to use this junk he can't figure out to use for something, and that's what we're doing today. But unfortunately, as the case usually ends up, my dad has hijacked this project, but I love him for it. He's giving me good ideas. So here we have an old Cajun anchor I used to use. This is PVC, but it's conduit, and it's three and a quarter. And on the bandsaw, Dad is gonna cut a 10 inch piece. There we go. Now we wanna cut a slot where the rod is gonna go. As you see, since this was an, uh, a Cajun anchor to begin with, it's already got an angle cut on it for going into the mud. Yep, we're gonna sandpaper this now. It's like the devil's horns. All right, so these are sharp, these edges. So what we wanna do is get them kind of dull so we don't end up nicking braid or monofilament. Oh, why do it by hand when you have such a beautiful belt sander? And there's our finished product. Look at that, nice. Nice and soft edges, but we need to work on these edges a little bit on the inside, and I'll do that. All right, hold it. Mud down there. Put it in the hole. Edges nice and soft now. So this fully extended brings you from the ground up to 11 inches right here. And this 10 inch piece is just going to slip right down on there. It's nice and tight. Now I'm not gonna bolt this through that hole. I'm just gonna leave it like this so I can adjust it as I'm fishing. I can take it off when I wanna pack it up. Nice and, nice and tight, no loosey goosey there at all. Just moves around and that's great. So this 10 inch piece brings it up to 16 inches for your rod. Let me show you right here. See that? 16 inches. And that's perfect for most situations. Let's test a rod out on it. All right, let's put this catfish rod up here. Now, you don't have to put the line in there. You can have the line on the pipe like that. Look at that. So, we got the first guide up above the PVC. And look down here. We have the reel up off the ground that's what you want so you can adjust this to pull out slack if you get a slack line it looks perfect so we're going to run a test here in the garage we're going to pick this leader up like this as if it would be on the bottom and we're going to play like we're a fish biting see the rod tip going down look over there the rod holder is not moving but let me show you something I'm going to put my hand right here on the rod, and I'm going to do this. See how that goes forward? Now let's adjust the footing. Let's put a foot like this because there's three feet. All right, now we have the hook and leader a bit more distance from the rod tip, and now we're going to jerk it really good. Look at that. Oh, took a couple of tries to get it to fall. I'm going to take these end caps off to see if I can extend these with PVC to make this more strong there we go you want that so now we have three 10 inch pieces of conduit there we go yeah 
that is a finished product right there. Extending the legs gives it more stability, but not like this. If, if it's a big fish, you could pull it right there. What you want to do is have this facing the water in line with the line as much as possible. And look, there's your strength right there. You got to have one forward and two to the side. So we came up with something useful for that weird kickball thing. And now we have to go out into the wild and test it. All right, let's go do that. I've brought dads and my project down to this uh, local lake. It's time to reassemble it and give it a test. See how it works with fish. <laughs> I brought a bunch of different bait down here. And for perspective, we're gonna put out two rods. The first rod, we're gonna put corn on it for carp. The next bait is gonna be night crawler. We're gonna take this very small octopus hook and just load it up with kernels of corn. Here is a size six bait keeper hook. It's got these little bait keepers on it, little barbs. We're going to thread this night crawler up this hook and over the knot. I want it to look something like this. This is a slip rig we're gonna use on this one and it's on a main line of eight pound mono and the leader is eight pound. Now, I'd actually planned on using this tripod thing Dad and I built in a different spot, a place where you can't use regular bank sticks. But that spot that I wanted to fish in is crowded right now with people. Now, I plan on switching things up as this session progresses. I want to catch some bait. That's why we're doing this right here. The, the, the bait may be used for this session today and definitely a session tomorrow. We have other things we can fish with. We're not gonna just keep a carp line out. We're going to switch lines up. If the carp line doesn't produce anything, we'll change it. I've changed things up. We're in a different location. We've pulled in the carp line. We're no longer doing that. We're gonna put out a line dedicated to catfish. At this spot, we can get out into an old creek channel. If you see this buoy out this way, if we get fairly close to that, we'll be in the channel. So we've got Nightcrawler on a one eye and we've upped our lead to three to get out that far. That should be in the creek channel. Should be catfish there. We're gonna put this on the homemade rod tripod. I've gone ahead and pulled this one line up. So we just have the catfish line out. We're gonna come out here because I have my boots on and we're going to float fish with a little bit of red wiggler to see if we can pull up some cut bait. Finally got a piece of bait here. Ooh. Ooh, it's not a piece of bait. You can't use this as bait, but this is cool. Look at that. Nice yellow bass. Woo. Oh. Oh. Yes. Finally, we got a fish on the homemade rod holder. Oh, is there, is he not here? Oh. Yes, he's here. I couldn't feel him. Oh, look at that. Another yellow bass. Yay. Look at that, Dad, our rod holder worked. Nice. So these are considered game fish in texas they are game fish some states you could fish with this but in this state because it's a game fish you're not allowed to use it as bait you can use it as a sandwich though there's no size limit here we are right on top of sunset here pretty soon i'm gonna have to pull up all these lines and go this was a really really fun session especially the first part where i made this little tripod rod holder with my dad in the shop that was a lot of fun and while I was out here fishing I met a really really cool fan who's opening a bait shop out here on Lake Holbrook in the coming weeks and I will be working with them and that's gonna be really cool got to go really far to get live bait so here pretty soon you won't have to if you're in this area or if you're coming out here to fish on Holbrook or in the area and I'm really looking forward to that that's gonna be awesome and you should look forward to that too, because it's gonna be awesome. Until then, 
like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Waiting on a ride, trying to do a round of bait fishing. How about a bonus fish? Yellow bass.